fight. <laughs> we stick together side by side. We try to, we try to. It's just a habit. I have a love to run on a stage. So, 2008. It was the end of March, beginning of April. That's my tax year end. I'd never paid so little tax and VAT in my life. We all know we want to pay taxes. It means we're earning money. I wasn't earning very much money. I said on my website I was a speaker. Where were the speaking engagements? I was doing quite a lot for free. There wasn't an awful lot coming up on the paid. And I thought to myself, what am I going to do? I'm going to make some changes. I'm going to think how I can make the business more profitable. And we brought in a whole raft of changes. It wasn't just collaboration, ladies and gentlemen. But would you like to tell me to tell you what I did that took my business from flatlining and really not doing very well in 2008, 2009 to last year being the best year I've ever had and this quarter has already been a superb quarter? Because I think regardless of how successful you are in the business now, you would like to be more successful. Am I right? Yeah. So let me give you the, the tips and the stories behind collaboration. And for that, I'll talk about the three C's. But I've had to change one of the words. Because I used to say that it was about connect, convince. I won't use that word anymore. <laughs> and collaborate. So now it's communicate. Stefan, where are you? Okay, so I'll, I'm going to... Actually, thanks to you, I've got brand new web content, so I will be changing. That's collaboration almost by osmosis. So, connect. That's the first thing. You know, a few years ago, it was enough to turn up, especially if you're in professional services, go to a networking event, hand over a card, connect, and business would come. Then it changed slightly. Then you had to communicate. You did have to convince people. It wasn't quite so easy anymore. And you had to tell people that if they connected with you, if they convinced with you, uh, um, collaborated with you, that you would be able to give them a very good return on investment. You were the best person to work with, and there was no risk. But the magic is when you do all of those things, and then you collaborate. Now, collaboration, you might be thinking, well, what's it all about? What does it look like? And I love to use little props, and some of you will recognize this one because Tim Gard, I'm a big fan. And he gave this to me last time I saw him in Manchester, and it's called a mental floss. So <laughs> I'm going to floss out your head, and Tim, I love you to bits, and thank you for my gift. So if you are thinking, I can't collaborate, then it's my job to come to you and say, I'm going to floss out those negative thoughts. Everybody can collaborate. You know, I've been collaborating while I've been sitting listening to you in the last 24 hours. I've been introducing Peter to a fighter pilot in UK. I think that, you know, I watch people and I think, how can I help them? I have introduced Cyril. I tweeted it to Cyril, said he wanted in his talk that he wanted to work in New Zealand. Where are you, Cyril? He's gone. He's gone. Okay, well... <laughs> well, what I did was I tweeted that he wanted to work in New Zealand and put it out to a couple of my New Zealand buddies and they've already said they'll help him. You know, I was collaborating with you and you didn't even know I was doing it. So, you know, look out for people. <laughs> look out to help people. So, Sam mentioned a solopreneur. Most of us are solopreneurs. But you want to be a co-preneur. Let me, in the next few minutes, tell you how I can do it. Because, you know, that's how you pronounce my name, by the way. It's really weird. Uh, it's Scottish Gaelic for Helen. And I once phoned somebody up, and they said, that is Eloida Milnes. And I realized at that point in my life, I was going to have to have a shortcut. So it is Ailey, but I respond to anything, all right? Hey, <laughs> 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 <A> you. Hey, <laughs> you. So... At the end of my talk, I feel as though I will have succeeded if I go from here and take all those little guys and questions away and you will say, yes, I will have a go. I will have succeeded if you think that you can do it too. So the Q&S means the, 
the, the setup. What am I doing? So my objective is to help you, and the setup is that I will tell you how to do it. If I can do it, you can do it. And then Jane will point out the pitfalls. Because I'm, I live in kind of Pollyanna land. You know, my clients 10 years ago called me Captain Positive. So, you know, I, I don't see the negative, but Jane lives in the real world, so we're a great <laughs> combination. So here we have here, this is my first book, Collaboratively. I worked with Mindy. Where's the marvelous Mindy? So we collaborated, didn't we, darling? Yes, we did. And then um, the next one was... <laughs> uh, my confidence book. Uh, who did I collaborate with that one for? That was with Ada Instone, and that was very successful. Then there's this one here. Several of you have had that one on the table. That was a multi-collaboration. That was 13 people. And the great thing about just being in the company of Ron Carr, I now know that when I go back, I have told enough people, and I'm now telling you, so it's going to happen, that because Ron said he has a, a LinkedIn page for his book, by the time another week has passed, Ron, we will have a LinkedIn page, make me accountable, check up on me, and... I'm not just doing it, I'm making sure the other 13 guys on this book do it. And then we will see some activity in turn. Collaboration, you, you know, you need to draw up your guidelines and your rules, but Jane's going to cover that. And then there's this one. That's the last book I've written recently. That was on culture. My topic is all about confidence and productivity. And when I was approached, I had been standing on a stage, Debbie Swallow, Dr. Debbie Swallow, her, her expertise is cultural diversity. She heard me speak. She said, we should work together. Now, that's what I want you to be thinking. I mean, okay, Jane and I are collaboration queens. You can approach us. But I would like you to be thinking about who's in the room. I now give you permission to have a conversation with someone that you never might otherwise have had. And it can go along the lines of, Ailey and Jane have said we should talk and start that conversation. So I had that conversation with Debbie, she saw me speak, and we started with a great mind map, Stefan. We knew where we were going, and we ended up not self-publishing, we went with a publisher this time. Now, there's a case study behind the diversity dashboard. I was approached by Munich Re. Have anyone ever heard of Munich Re? Large German um, insurance company, reinsurance company. It's quite a long story. Let me just cut to the quick. I was asked if I would um, allow them to use a fabulous little animation that we have on the internet. It's already had 72, 76, I think it is, thousand hits. And they asked if they could use this animation on their internet. Well, it was going to be rather silly to say, no, I would love them to have this animation. But I thought, how can I leverage something? Now, again, I should probably have phoned and collaborated a bit earlier. Ron has given me more tips. He gave me those in Australia. I re recorded them on my voicemail, and I'm putting them into action. However, I did make some progress, and I phoned and contacted Felix Schweikert. Who knows, knows Felix? And I said, Felix, this German company, if I open the door, will you help me walk through it? I can speak a little German. Guten Tag. Danke schön. <laughs> Hey, I can do a little bit more, but not like Felix. And his sweet spot is insurance. So let's take it to the end. I'm over in Australia. Well, actually, it's only the middle of the end. It's nowhere in sight. The end is going to be very successful. Munich, we are now ordering books. And I said, oh, would you like them to be delivered? My office can ship them tomorrow. Or would you like me to wait till I get back into UK? I will personally sign them for you, and I'll have them hand-delivered by Felix. Or would you like them shipped tomorrow? Oh, no, no, but they would like them hand-delivered by Felix. So now Felix will get through the door with the books and collaboration seriously will start. I hope I get both of his business. That's my real key objective. But I may only get something for Felix. Does it matter? No. It's a win whatever happens. So whatever you can do, do it and ask. And then once I've got a better relationship going, I'm going to put into place all the tips that are on my iPhone on a voice memo from Ron. So, that's how I collaborate. How many of you collaborated with books? How many of you collaborated on a book? A great number of you. Well, if you haven't got your hand up, look at the people whose hands are up. They know what they're doing. Collaborate with them. Collaborate with charities. I was listening to Radio 2 three or four years ago. There was a very good program. It was Chris Evans on Drive Time. This girl here, um, Sally B, this one, Sally, 
was talking about the fact she'd had five heart attacks in five days, and she survived. Fabulous story. I was so impressed by her story. I jumped onto Google and contacted her. This is me collaborating with a total stranger. She's on the radio, for goodness sakes. On the radio. And I said to her, I'm really, really impressed by your story. Six months later, she's cutting a disc for charity. Who does she contact? Me. And I invited on nine people that I never knew in my life before. They were Twitter followers, but they said they could sing. And we all joined together and we cut a CD and we raised a lot of money for charity. I have fans. And one of the best things for the association is some of them have actually become professional speakers. So I was looking after myself, charity and PSA. How cool is that? You never know what's going to happen with collaboration. I collaborate with my service providers. I like geeky stuff. Okay, fine. So I collaborate with my people who give me service. If you are going to collaborate, attract the right kind of people into your life, who do you want to collaborate with? Be a people magnet for them. Attract them. Right. Would you like to collaborate with this guy? What do you think his qualities are? Tell me, his qualities. Open He'll open doors in a big way. <laughs> He'll charge them down. <laughs> yeah. He's not going to take any prisoners, is he? The thing is, you might get a rash working with someone who's constantly rhino. But I, you know, if I wanted to be working with a collaborator, I think of David Heiner in UK. He's a rhino, but he's one of the sweetest and nicest guys I know. So don't, I think that slide there is don't judge a book by its cover. You know, people in this room can have such great reputations that you're kind of frightened to approach them because you know they're already successful. So you might be thinking, would they want to collaborate with me? Well, don't make that an excuse to start having a conversation. They're not really rhinos all the time, and they might be very interested in your ideas. So who do you want to work with? What kind of skills do you want? What kind of qualities do you want? Just look at that for 13 seconds and tell me what skill would you book for? What quality, what personality, what characteristic is important? And I'll pick yours. What's your one? What's your characteristic? Brave. And what's yours, Froa? <laughs> what's your characteristic? Honest. Honest. Yes. And Niels, what is your characteristic? Uh, I think it's important. <laughs> well, that doesn't surprise me. I think you're one of the smartest guys in the room. So, yes, absolutely. And, but don't be tempted. You know, Niels has gone with a quality he has, but also look for qualities that you don't have. Oh, and always have backup as well, by the way. Um, <laughs> Imagine a pianist, right, I'm going to have to rush through this now, so here we go, imagine a pianist, is it an upright, is it a baby grand, is the pianist male or female, what are they wearing, what music are they playing, are you expecting to see what on the screen? I have only 20 minutes, darling, so we have to do what we can. A UAP, I wonder if you know what a UAP is? No. It's an underwear adjustment point. At this point, <laughs> <laughs> at this point, you've all been sitting on your butts too long, and so we need to get you moving. Now, I have to say that there could be health and safety, for all would tell me off. You are now responsible for your own safety. I am not going to follow you around the room. Don't do anything daft. If you want to partake, fine. If you'd rather sit and observe, that's fine too. If you have a sore back, don't join in. So it's up to you. You're in charge of your own decisions. But as I'm doing this, I'm going to ask Jane. She will begin to, because at, at the end, I've only got a few minutes left, uh, we are going to do a very um, clever thing at the end, and we will give away two of our books. My one on... Uh, Diversity, and Jane's is on the corporate peacemaker. So all you'll have to do is drop your business card in that paper bag, or if you haven't got a card, write your name on the paper, and we will make sure that we pull it out at the end. We've allowed for time to do that. So here goes the room walk.
this is what I'd like you to do, and we only have a couple of minutes to do it. So listen to the instructions, and then if you wish to, you move. The back three tables, will you go and stand at the back of the room? Actually, it's back four tables, isn't it? And these front three, will you kind of stand here? So everybody move now to a corner of the room, back or down here. Thank you. Right, you're all in one side of the room. Now, if there's people sitting down, you have a very important job to do. You are the observers. You are watching how they behave, and I'm going to ask you so that we can feed back. So are you people standing on that side? I'd rather have you. You're just going to cross that way. Okay, fine, but that's, I think if you all go on the same side, it would be helpful. Right, what I'd like you to do fellow speakers, is just cross the room. Go. Thank you. In collaboration, you're quite, you know, you start off thinking, what's it going to be all about? I don't know what I'm doing. Is it going to be safe? Now, I haven't hurt you. Nobody has died, and it was okay. So will you now come back to the other side of the room? Right. Did you feel any different on the way back? How did you feel? Okay, you felt better. You felt good. Final time. And now this is when I want my observers and everyone to be aware. I want you to go back to the other side of the room for the last time. And when you go back, you need to collaborate. So do something in a collaboration factor with a person or people. Get to the other side of the room. And there were prizes for the best. <laughs> Applause and sit down, please. Sit down, please, ladies and gentlemen. Well done. So, I want you to tell me, how did it feel in it, the, on the last time when you collaborated? How did it feel? Great fun. It was great fun. How did you feel, Hans? Um, it was very heavy to carry her. <laughs> I was going to give that group the prize, but I'm afraid that Hans has just blown it. Uh, <laughs> I saw somebody piggybacking. Who was that? Who had somebody on their back and piggybacking? That was you and... No, no, not me. <laughs> Froa and your piggyback partner, Paul. Please see me at the end, and we will give you one of these books. And thank you very much. Collaboration, it's fun, as long as you don't go like this. Jane is covering that in great detail. <laughs> there we are. We were asked, we even wore the same outfits. Um, we were asked to be the president of PSA, and they wanted us to do one at a time. The setup was something like this. It's a really tough job. Anyone who's been president will know that. It's very political. <laughs> When you're finished, your business will have suffered. And you'll probably need some kind of psychological report. And I thought, that's the worst sale I've ever heard in my life. I was not going to be convinced that that was what needed to be done. So we said we would collaborate. All I can say is, we drew up, six months before we ever came president, our achievables. We wrote down what we could achieve as president for the PSA, but we also wrote down what we could achieve for ourselves. And we're bang on target and exceeding all our expectations. But we're not doing it because we are great, per se. 
We're doing it because we've collaborated with some fabulous people. I've heard Ron talk about coalition arrangements. I've heard Leslie say that she couldn't have managed to run GSF if she hadn't collaborated with people. I don't care whether you call it cooperation, collaboration, or coalition. Just do it. Just do it, because your benefit will be tremendous. So stop this kind of negative thinking. I'm cleaning out your ears. Go for it. You can do it. Because as I said with my little guides at the beginning, if I can, you can. Forget about tomorrow. I don't want tomorrow. I'm a today girl. Do it today. You've got on the table, um, uncork your survivor spirit. I do believe that when I got to 2008 and business wasn't good, I just pulled out the cork and I unleashed my survivor spirit and my business. Isn't it? And I, I did, do have to say credit to someone in the room who I thought did a fabulous job yesterday. Another key thing, because I said there was a raft of things happened in 2008. And one of them was that I joined a mastermind team with Chris Davidson. It was a joy working with you. I think our businesses have both benefited as a result. I look forward to collaborating with you. I'm a collaboration queen. So just if you think that I can work with you and I can help you in any way. When I was in Australia, one of the past presidents, Peter Roper, contacted me. And I'm going to finish on this. He contacted me and said, do you think you could find anybody over there who would like to contribute to my family business magazine? Now, listen, please, because Peter also might like to include you. Have you got your ears pointing the right way? So I said to Peter, well, let me get back home and then I'll do the best I can for you and I'll find out what you really need. Long story, short finish. I send an email because one thing Chris Davidson taught me was when you do data capture, you must segment it. So I, had, I have very segmented data. So I sent an email to Australia to 27 people. And I said, my buddy Peter Roper is looking for. The following people responded to me. I would never have known that these people wanted to collaborate had I not asked them. And Peter will now have uh, information from, wrong piece of paper, Ailey, pick up the right one. From, here we go, Travis Bell, John Neal from TEDx, Jill Walker, Shivani Gopta, Jennifer uh, Canviler said she'd love to but not just yet, Kath Vincent, Tom O'Neill from New Zealand, he's the guy who's going to help your colleague here, and the other thing that came out of it for me, I was busy helping somebody, one of my Aussie buddies induced me to Seth Godin, I'm now a friend with Seth Godin, I'm using his material because I went out to help somebody else. And somebody else, out of the blue, helped me. Go collaborate, and thank you very much.